famous scenes with drama queens and heroes Acted out there on the silver screen Come grab a seat, popcorn is on me Welcome to Meet Me at the Movies. Uh, Noel T. Manning II here. Appreciate you spending time with us, whether you're doing that through C19 TV or through WGWG. We appreciate however you decide to find us. Very happy to have somebody I've been trying to get on the show for it feels like decades. And I know it's only been just a few years, but Gray Drake, so good to see you. Thanks for joining us. We did it. We're here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the first time we met was at the Critics' Choice Awards a few years ago. I brought my daughter along as uh, as my date, and we've got a great photo uh, of the three of us. And then when my son came uh, last time, we had a live uh, live show uh, for the Critics' Choice. You got to have a photo with us as well. So, really glad to have you. Great. I mean, you have been involved in in film for quite a while, Critics' Choice for almost a decade now, and you are now a Board of Directors member, also for the Critics' Choice, so congrats on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> chaos and mayhem will soon follow, we know, we know. Currently, people can find you at Good Day LA, uh, and also radio, formerly uh, senior editor for Rotten Tomatoes, you've been on CNN, and Mrs. Movie Phone, and, and what else am I leaving out for this filmmaker, journalist, film critic extraordinaire? No, I think you hit everything. <laughs> um, I, I've, I've been all over doing reviews on all kinds of stations on behalf of Rotten Tomatoes and Movie Phone, uh, and what a ride it's been. Because I, I, just the idea that I'm on the board of directors and a, an elected position in the Critics' Choice Awards, you know, geez, it's, it's a, amazing. Yeah, very, very cool. So, so let's, let's go back into the history of Grey Drake and, and find out where this love of film first started. I credit my mom primarily with my movie loving because when she was a kid, so she was technically my grandmother and grew up like she was like a depression baby. And so back then, that was, those were the days that you would pay, what, five or 10 cents maybe, and you just sit in the movie theater all day long. You could just watch the picture, watch the newsreels. It would just go over and over and over. And she would memorize this stuff. And so I think that her deep love of movies just sort of carried into our lives. And I ended up I didn't make the connection for the longest time, but I was like, yeah, I was always the person that was picking the movies for all of my friends to see when I was a kid and always wanting to watch more and more stuff on television when I was young. Do you remember some of those early films that really connected with you when you were younger? Well, my mom always showed me a bunch of old stuff. So, uh, <laughs> like, her favorite was Tyrone Power. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't even get her started. But we're like, but so we, we love classic movie actors, and I'm a big Jimmy Stewart fan. So the, the Glenn Miller story and, you know, Harvey, everything that yes. he did was big in our house. Um, but my first big movie that I got on a VHS cassette that I watched over and over and over again until I, I can't believe it didn't break is the Madonna movie, Who's That Girl? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I just loved that movie. I loved, uh, when I look back on the movies that, that really influenced me, I'd say that probably easily 50% of them starred all of those sort of quirky, offbeat, strong women. Okay. And which is never something that I really consciously sought out, but a lot of my personality and the work that I do today really lies with those movies. And so Who's That Girl was the first one because in that movie, um, it was Madonna in her bleach blonde phase, one of the best. <laughs> yes. And she plays this woman named Nikki Finn, 
who is being released from prison after serving time for the murder of her boyfriend, which she did not commit. She keeps saying she did not commit this murder, um, that she was framed. And, but it's like very zany, stupid kind of prison. <laughs> <laughs> like she has posters of like Elvis Presley on her wall and she's like singing to the guard kind of. And right. <laughs> it's not a musical, but it is, the soundtrack is so strong. And so when she is released on parole, there is a man who is charged with making sure she gets on the bus to go where back to where she came from in Philly. And that man is played by Griffin Dunn, one of our most exceptional performers and now directors who I was obsessed with. <laughs> uh, and together they have like a zany adventure and it's, God, I love that movie. I can't argue that it's a great movie, yeah. but there's a lot of personality in it. Well, I think that's one of the beautiful things I love to talk about when I talk about film. There are films that are filmatic or cinematic art, and then there are films that you just love because they take you away or they speak to you or they have a way of connecting with you. And in many ways, to me, those films are just as strong or just as solid as the artistic award-winning masterpieces because if they speak to you, that's what matters. That's what matters when you get right down to it. Absolutely. I, it's, that's what's great about movies is, you know, art is subjective. It hits everyone in a completely different way and a different, and when you're at a different point in your life as well. And I, it's, it's something that I struggle with when I am critiquing something, yeah. because especially if it's a negative review, I think to myself, like, I'm probably going to feel differently about this later. Yeah. You know, like, I, I'm sure that I can still see the criticisms that I initially gave, but at the same time, like, I hated the internship with <laughs> Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn so much when I first saw it. And then I watched it again, probably four years later, in a hotel as I was waking up for the morning, a little hungover, and I thought it was actually pretty funny. And I was like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it is when you revisit films like that, that happens sometimes for me. Uh, my, the example that comes to mind for me was Turner and Hooch mm. with Tom Hanks and, and of course, Hooch. And uh, the first time I went to see it, it was just me, uh, you know, in a, in a movie theater. It was like a Wednesday night. Nobody else was in there. Maybe three people. I think there was a, a, you know, a drunk guy in the back. And it, I, I thought it was an okay movie. It just didn't, uh, it just didn't connect. The following week, a whole bunch of college friends invited me to go. And the only reason I went was because of them. And seeing it with them, with that environment of friends, it clicked with me in ways it did not when I was just alone. And my whole grade for that changed. And at that time I was writing movie reviews for a college newspaper. And so I had to go back the following week and do kind of a disclaimer and a clarification. And it really does speak to kind of where we are in life. I go back and, and think about films from you know, the 80s that I loved and they're not artistic masterpieces, but at that particular time in my life, especially the coming of age movies, and there were so many of them really did speak with, speak to me. And, and they still do because I can think back and revisit that time. Have you seen the Disney plus remake of Turner and Hooch yet? No, I have not. I, yeah. have not. I haven't Stay either. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what they're trying to do with it. And it, they, it was released to very little fanfare. So I'm suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> there are some films that are better left alone. You, you, you don't need to remake them. Now that one may be in the right hands. I could see, but uh, yeah, I have not gone to, to visit that. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> so what, what are some of those other films that you can think of that maybe the looking at them through a different lens or thinking about them differently after the fact you've changed either positive or negative? Well, I'll tell you that the first big movie 
that I can remember that my friends and I all picked to see together. So similar setup to your Turner and Hooch experience was when I convinced all my friends to go see Jurassic Park. So there had to be a whole row full of us, which is like every adult moviegoer's nightmare. <laughs> when they see like all those kids and they're all they're not unsupervised <laughs> yeah. yeah and i remember being so swept up in that movie from beginning to end where where we are literally leaping onto each other's laps in fear and we're laughing and we're so captivated and it was just i remember kind of looking around at my friends and realizing how powerful an experience this is. And that movie still holds up yeah. and is such a, it, it hits on all six cylinders in such a way that it, every aspect of it is worth looking at. And I love that, that we sort of live in that society now where a lot of people will do pieces on why, why? these deep dives into movies and stuff because like even getting to go to weta in new zealand and talk to these guys that i know worked on the movie and yeah. just kind of pull them aside and be like can you tell me about jurassic <laughs> park a little bit and like they'll say these brilliant things like oh we didn't know that we we really knew that the technology wasn't quite there yet so while everything that happens when you see CG, it's either at night or in rain or in the trees. <gasps> wow. Uh, yeah. And it's like, that's a conscious choice because they were very limited technologically. And it's moments like that in my life where I just feel like it's come completely full circle that I get to be this, like, y you know, this child full of wonder that loves something her whole life. And then I get to actually talk to the people that, that created that and humanize them. And I think like, I can't believe this is like an actual job. Like, how did <laughs> I get here? This is amazing. Cause I, I, if I could tell little me that like, I would get to interview Griffin Dunn and like, I get to talk to the guys that did the CG and that in Jurassic Park, like I would never have believed me. Yeah. God, so good. <laughs> um, but on a on a more serious note, for movies that really shaped me, I when I watched Network. Okay. Yes. Relatively yes. later, it was later on. It was like when I had the mental capacity to right. appreciate it, because I had always seen on tv like mad as hell i'm not gonna take it to the boat. like you know i knew i knew the movie but when i actually started studying film that one really stood out to me um and patty chayefsky as a screenwriter i th i'm pretty positive that he had like a crystal ball that just saw the future because yeah. every movie that that dude touched it will blow your mind. I mean, like he even w did movies on the hospital system and well, the wellness industry and it, it, everything. And I, I just remember being like, oh, wow. Like I did, I made a good move studying film because it has, it's, it has every right to be studied. Absolutely. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to take an intermission right here on Meet Me at the Movies. Come back talking about more about uh, your film studies, how that happened and how that changed you and how that changed your perspective. Uh, we are talking with Gray Drake right here on Meet Me at the Movies. I'm Noel T. Manning II. We appreciate you spending time with us. Hang around. Just a quick intermission. We'll be back with more right after this. Between your job, your family, and other demands on your time, life can get pretty hectic. So we want you to take time for yourself. Hi, I'm Jennifer Harrell, and I want you to join me for your health. 
Each month, the Cleveland County Health Department and C19 TV will explore topics that affect you and your family's health. We'll discuss the importance of exercise, a healthy diet, and regular health screenings and checkups. From fitness tips to warning signs to the latest health care news, for your health will help keep you in shape and up to date in Cleveland County. We want you to be your best, so join us each month for your health. Right here on Spectrum Cable and online, c19.tv. I would tell anybody that's interested in getting broadcasting that um, this is a really exciting field to be in. The possibilities are endless. And every day is different. Um, there's always something new. Um, you're always on your toes. It's, I think the good thing about you know a school like Cleveland Community College is they're really good at keeping up with the latest technologies. My experience um, with the broadcasting program has been everything and more. I've hosted a television show here. I've done radio shows. I've, I've made my own commercials, all kinds of exciting things, digital animation. And I've never thought I'd have a career in news that I enjoy. It's just really exciting to you know have a career where you're in control of what two million people in the area are watching every night. It's really exciting and enriching and fulfilling work. It doesn't feel like a job. I mean, I get to hang around all day and make television. I mean, just listen to that. Now the question is, are you ready to start your journey today? Welcome back to Meet Me in the Movies. Noel T. Manning II here with Gray Drake talking movies. Uh, you can find Gray all over the place. Uh, just just search her. And, and, and the name is spelled, how is it spelled? It's G-R-A-E because there my family go. finds Y's untrustworthy. <laughs> Why? Because you're untrustworthy. There you go. Make a little song out of it. <laughs> well, let's talk about, you know, right before the break, you were talking just a bit about uh, when you started studying film. And Network was one of those films that you realized, wow, there's something of substance here. Uh, why did you decide to start studying it from that standpoint? How did that happen? And what was that pathway for you? I didn't know what I wanted to study. I only knew that I had to go to college and had no other options. So, <laughs> yes. so I was looking through a course book and I realized that everything I enjoyed doing was in the College of Communication. So journalism, uh, film studies, photography, all that kind of stuff was in that one particular college. And it occurred to me that not everyone really enjoys spending an entire summer filming their own movie and then editing it and sh screening it just for their friends. Yes. Like that's not necessarily a normal thing. Um, and so a person who enjoyed doing that, like I did, should probably look into studying film. And <laughs> So I went to the University of Texas at Austin. The Longhorns! And, yay! <laughs> and I was uh, accepted into their film program and it was sensational. It was so fun to give a, a sort of educational context to the things I just loved watching for fun for yeah. so long. But to be able to give things names uh, to be able to look at the work of great masters I might not have ever known about otherwise was just like a blast of a yeah. four-year period, like really fun. I Such great teachers, and I still retain so much of it today. It's really impressive because I have a terrible memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're also able to apply it uh, because of what you're doing, and I think that's a big part of it. You know, if we can utilize the things we learned in college in, in ways that speak to what we're doing uh, and connecting it to what we love, then, then we've got something. And here you are being able to do that and, and marry that. Um, before the break, you were also talking about being able to interview some of these folks that uh, you never considered back when, when you were a kid just watching the movies. Yeah. You have been able to interview so many uh, people um, and it seems like daily there are more interviews that, that just keep churning out that you, you've been involved in. What are some of those standout interviews for you and, and maybe why? And I will say probably my favorite picture of you in an interview is with Jamie Lee Curtis and she's one of my favorite interviews because she makes everybody feel like you're their favorite person and that's one of the things about her that I just love. Absolutely love that about Jamie Lee Curtis. 
<laughs> yeah, she's such a an intelligent, generous person. And she has managed to take a Hollywood life and make it very grounded somehow. Yeah. And she's really in in like, like I it. getting I to interview like her at San Diego Comic Con was a dream come true because I'm also a huge fan. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I, by the time the interview was over, like she was like kissing me on the cheek and like hugging me and was just like great that was amazing i mean it was just and and we've done other pieces as well that like really dig into like her halloween character and and laurie strode and just she's sensational i i i love talking to these kinds of artistic people because to varying degrees i love listening to them uh verbalize their artistic their process right now. yeah Mine is. and even though that might be kind of a pretentious way to describe it i, I just I like i'm i'm nosy and i love <laughs> movies <laughs> i love I, I have all those little tiny weird burning questions um another actor who i adore is nicholas cage because that dude his his career runs the gamut he'll do nearly anything it seems yeah. <laughs> but my favorite part about watching him is that even since he was a, when he was young he's a hundred percent committed and if you ask him what was your reasoning in playing the character like this okay <laughs> it's a risky question because some actors hate answering it because they're doing it intuitively but Nick Cage has a reason for everything. We'll dig deep into why he chose to do that. Like in a movie he did called Joe, we talked about how he handled a live poisonous snake. And he really did that. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily in the script, but he had come up with the idea when he was thinking about the character. And then he also just like had a book on how to handle live snakes. <laughs> wow. And I just, I'm like, I just love him. And like, you yeah. can ask him about his hair in a movie. Cause, and he's like, he'll go, he'll talk about the hair. I just, I think he's so great. He, he totally exceeded my expectations. Cause I thought he would be weird and he was <laughs> like even weirder, but in a very friendly way. <laughs> In a good way, in a good way, yes. <laughs> in that quirky way that you seem to love. You love the quirkiness, and so you're yeah. drawn to that. <laughs> I love, I and I love the joy of this job. I love, I love the joy of of getting to speak to these people whose work has shaped my life, and so many people who are watching. And I also like to humanize both of us, right. because I think people get the wrong idea about actors that they love when really they're totally normal people and yes. they're creepy and they mess up and they smell funny and <laughs> they trip and i i just like i really like reminding people of that yeah so w when you first started doing this and, and doing it uh in radio and uh, behind a camera in front of a camera were there certain film critics or film journalists or entertainment journalists that you remember watching and going, gosh, I love them. I, I hope I'm as good as them, or I hope that I could pull something from them. I grew up reading and watching Roger Ebert and Leonard Maltin. Yeah. And my family were huge Entertainment Tonight fans, so we were a Leonard Maltin household. And they were sort of my gateway drug to other critics like Pauline Kael. Yes. You know, and even right now, like Manola Dargis and, and just like all these like Owen Gleiberman, like all these yes. great yeah. thinkers. Um, I, I, I'm conflicted as a former filmmaker having gone to film school. I, I calling myself a critic makes me a little squirrely. Like it bothers yes. me. Yeah, I get and, it. Cause I, it's a, it's a tragedy when a movie doesn't reach someone and it makes me sad. And I don't ever want to say that a movie's terrible, but I have to be honest, it's really awful. The only thing that I, that, that sort of 
helps me through that process is when I think about how if you study, then it, if you study and you turn criticism into its own form of art, like right. those people did and do, yes. then that's the goal. It's, it's not, it's, I know that I'm like, oh, she's this wacky girl with pink hair and she licked Paul Rudd and it's like, yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can say I've never licked Paul Rudd. That's that's one thing I've never done. He so. tastes amazing. I've done it a few times. It's all on camera. It was nothing weird. Well, no, wait, it was definitely weird, but it, it wasn't it wasn't anything secret. Let's put that. Um, but I mean, I, I know that I'm kind of wacky, but I do think that everyone, in order to be a part of this, should earn their place by educating themselves as much as they can, you know? And oh. so it's always reading, always watching, you know, and, and always, especially going back and seeing older stuff. Oh, absolutely. I, I agree completely. And I, I love what you said about taking it into an art form itself and the people you mentioned are legends and they have done that. They have absolutely done that. Well, uh, time is, is getting short, but I do want you to share with me why you believe that film matters today even more than, than ever before from a historical lens. Why does it matter today? Why does it continue to speak to people? And, and why should we continue to go to theaters uh, and yeah. engage in cinema? As I stand here on this spot on this day, the thing that moves me the most about movies and that I find to be the most important thing is that it's an experience that we have together. And sitting in this room and focused on the same thing and getting to emotionally take that in is an experience unlike any other thing. Every other form of art is just a little bit different. It's not about dark rooms and a glowing screen. It's about a beautiful museum room filled with gorgeous paintings or furniture or what have you. Um, movies though, have that power to deeply penetrate your memories, your mind, your whole heart. And I really missed it. I've missed having that experience with people in that room and getting it back is precious. And so it's like watching stuff on TV is great, no problem, home entertainment sense systems are awesome, but we are meant to be with other people and we are meant to have shared experiences and having them around a movie screen is unlike anything else. Absolutely, Gray Drake, thanks so much for joining us right here on Meet Me at the Movies. Time went way too fast way too fast. How is the best way for our listeners and our viewers to find you uh, on social? So I'm all over social, YouTube, <laughs> uh, the Fox LA website, and uh, at my name. So just don't forget, it's G-R-A-E-D-R-A-K-E. -E, and look me up and argue with me about who's that girl. I dare you. <laughs> and, I do, and I just got a tweet and someone wanted to know, has your hair been any other color besides pink that wasn't <laughs> your natural color? So ah. there's the question. There's the okay. question. So the answer is no, it's always <laughs> pink in the middle. We change the colors up on the sides. So <laughs> the only color it hasn't been on the sides is green. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Awesome to see you. And for all of those spending time with us right here on Meet Me the Movies through C19 or through WGWG. Thank you. Uh, and until next time, I'm Noel T. Manning II, and that is a wrap. Manning.